Let's bring in Doug Brown. He's been very patiently sitting with us for a while, and I can only imagine, Doug, that CJOB picked up your exorbitant contract for 2021, and you'll be back in the booth tonight, I hope. Yeah, you bet your brother. All right. Well, I can't wait to listen. It seems like I always pick you guys up on satellite radio, you and Knuckles, and uh, kudos on, on being back for another year. You're probably getting it all week, Doug. What are you expecting tonight in the game? Well, I think both teams, we're talking about two compromised rosters, right? So a lot of key players on, on both sides of the football are not going to be available for the, the game. Uh, most importantly for Winnipeg, I think, is the fact that obviously Andrew Harris won't be playing, and he's really the stir that's, uh, he's the straw that stirs the drink for that Winnipeg offense. Everything goes through him. Uh, you want to talk about the running game. You want to talk about the passing game. You want to talk about yards from scrimmage. You want to talk about total touches of uh, the football offensively. You know, you're coming up Andrew Harris across the board. So I think we're going to see um, almost a three-pronged attempt to uh, cover up with that. Uh, having uh, Oliveira, obviously, in the backfield, and Johnny Augustine, and maybe even some Nick Dembski back there as well. Uh, hopefully those three combined can do the kind of things that uh, we expect from Andrew Harris, uh, that we got used to from Andrew Harris on a weekly basis. But it's going to be interesting. It's going to be about uh, it's going to be a game about which team uh, you know can still dictate and uh, execute their game plan uh, in spite of the fact that they're both uh, missing so many key performers. You know, I got a question for you, Doug. And Nick's obviously got a few too. But one is Buck Pierce. You played with him. Um, what do you think his his tastes are going to be on this offensive playbook compared to Lapo? Because I love what Lapo did. Man, he's the Swiss Army knife, right? He'll make everything work. He did it all the way to the Grey Cup. What's Buck's traits, do you think, in this offense? What's he like to do? You know, I think anytime you get a, a new offensive coordinator, I think you're going to see some of his personality come through in that play calling and that uh, play design. So I think we're going to see a lot of what Paul Lapolis taught him. And I love the fact that Buck Pierce did not rush into an offensive coordinator position just because it was available to him. He took his time. He studied under, you know, one of the greatest uh, offensive football minds in the CFL in Paul LaPolice. So I think we're going to see a lot of that same structure, but uh, you know, Buck Pierce's personality, he's, he was a gunslinger. He was fearless out there as a quarterback. So I think you're going to see a more aggressive version of that uh, Lapo offense. I think he's going to take more shots downfield. I think he's going to, lay it all out on the line, which is kind of the style of, of football that Buck Pierce used to play, right? He was never, uh, he would never shy away from uh, putting it all on the line for his teammates. So uh, I expect he'll have uh, his offensive group with that similar mindset, you know, uh, that collective unselfishness that uh, Buck Pierce really uh, embodies. And I, I, I think the offense is going to take some shots and uh, I think uh, they're going to be a, a very well-balanced, multi-dimensional uh, attacking force. So we're pretty excited to see him uh, un unveil his uh, offensive uh, workings for the first time here. Long time coming, that's for sure. I'm a fan of Johnny Augustine. He reminds me of Andre Dury. Hmm. Can you just talk to the people more about who this is? Because I don't, I don't think, in, unless you're a Bomber fan, you might know because you've seen spurts, but... The league should be knowing who Johnny Augustine is as a running back. Yeah, I sure hope they do. Um, I, I imagine we're going to see uh, a lot of him tonight platooning in and out with with Brady. And uh, Augustine, uh, I like the style of running back that he is. He's a real upright kind of runner. Um, he's explosive. Uh, he's got that full package where he's not just a north-south guy, right? He can make people miss, but he can also run with power. He's got a good second gear. He can accelerate through the hole. So I like Johnny Augustine. Uh, I, I think there's aspects of his game he needs to pick up, but I, I think he's been learning and under the tutelage of one of the best, obviously, in Andrew Harris. So you want to learn about what becoming a complete back is. Uh, he's been he's been uh, practicing with one of the masters in that, right? It's It's all about what your responsibilities are when you're not getting the ball as much as it is, is what you're doing when it is your opportunity to be productive and shine. And uh, I agree with you. Um, I, I think Johnny Augustine is, is a player people are going to come to know as uh, the season goes forward. I think his role is going to increase with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And I think he's, uh, he's got a lot of potential. I think he's a fantastic, we saw him in spurts, obviously in 2019. And uh, I just uh, very impressed by what he's able to put on the on the football field and 
hard shoes to step into, obviously, when Andrew Harris gets hurt. But Johnny Augustine, uh, you know, he uh, he turned some heads uh, when he's gotten his opportunities uh, to play for this football team. Hall of Famer uh, Doug Brown with us from Winnipeg in advance of the Ticats and the Blue Bombers tonight. Doug, I'd love to get your take on the injuries across the Canadian Football League and training camp. Your uh, camp was it was right affected. Mercy Maston with a blown Achilles. Uh, five of them in Saskatchewan. Calgary had theirs with Charlie Power. Not to mention the ones that we haven't really heard about. S- surprised or not surprised how this has gone down? And what do you expect moving into the regular season? You know, that's that's a great question. Uh, you like to say you're surprised by it, but I mean, I'm obviously surprised by what happened in Saskatchewan. I, I've never even heard of something like that before with the Achilles injuries and happening in succession like that. But it's uh, that much time off, right? I mean, and the interesting thing too, uh, players, uh, and obviously Mr. Lewis can attest to this, uh, as you get older, uh, you got to stay on top of everything, right? You can't... Uh, you can't afford to, to miss a season per se. And obviously no one had that choice in the CFL with what happened in 2020. But in terms of your training, I mean, I saw uh, several approaches uh, for, for what guys did in all their downtime. And some guys I know like Adam Big Hill just kept going. And I think that was the best mentality and that was the best approach. And he's been uh, going like gangbusters through, through training camp in Winnipeg. And uh, I just feel like, you know, some older guys, potentially, if you had that, uh, that stoppage of, uh, you know, uh, football related activities and training and conditioning and, and weightlifting, and then you jump back into it, you, your body just doesn't respond. I, I know as I got older, your downtime after the end of the season got shorter and shorter and shorter because you had to stay on top of everything. Otherwise, you know, you just, uh, you turn to pudding, I think, as uh, as a player, uh, as you get older, things just don't respond or, or rebound like they used to. And unfortunately, it's just been uh, an epidemic across the CFL in terms of guys getting back in and uh, their bodies letting them, know, letting them know that their ramp up time was was not adequate or they weren't doing enough going into the season. That's unfortunate. I mean, guys were they didn't know the season. I mean, three months ago. Right. We, we still didn't know if their season was going to happen. So they're working. They're like, we're trained, but we're probably not training the three, four months like we're actually going back to play because I think not until the middle of June was it actually official that they were going to come back and play. So that could really affect uh, their their training. And, you know, it's a big difference from training in the gym to training for a football season, uh, especially a professional. Especially what happened in 2020 as well, right? They had that anticipation. Guys thought – you know, there hasn't not been a CFL season. So uh, the lead up in 2020 was was the same, similar to what we saw in 2021. You know, okay, it's going to be shortened. It's going to be condensed. Guys were obviously probably still training. And I don't know if this is a, a fool me once, fool me twice kind of scenario where the players are like, oh, in 2021, hey, we heard this before. We heard this last year. Uh, and I don't know if the, how many were convinced that this was actually going to come to, to fruition. Obviously, a lot of what we saw in, in uh, this year in the buildup to this season was similar to what we saw in 2020 when everyone was expecting there was going to be a CFL football season. So it is hard to really blame the players for not being you know, adequately uh, prepared and, and physically more durable just because I'm sure there was some disbelief uh, whether this was going to all come together this year or not. And uh, we're seeing that reflected in the injuries, catastrophic injuries that has happened uh, across across the country. I got two last questions for you, uh, Mr. Brown, and one is about Zach Caleros. You saw us talking about, uh, well, me anyways, my affection for him as a person and as a quarterback. Uh, what are you hearing out of how he's looked in training camp? What, what do you think his demeanor is going into this season? Seems like he's always trying to prove people wrong. He's got the hair flowing. To get the flow, I haven't seen that. Seems like he's always got to prove people wrong, right? Yeah, his great hair this year, that's for sure, without question. Um, you know, and that's a very good point, Rod. And you have to wonder, uh, you know, he obviously, that was a big incentive for him, a big motivator, I think, for him in 2019, what he was able to do when he came to this football team, go undefeated. He won all four games and for the you know, hardest places to play football games. Uh, the, he was a road warrior, right? And he had that mentality that, you know, people were like, this is a last ditch attempt for the Bombers to salvage their season. 
Uh, nobody thought he could come in and lead this football team to a championship. So I, obviously, I don't think he has that chip on his shoulder anymore. It'll be interesting hmm. to see. Uh, some guys have a knack about resurrecting things or inventing things or imagining things, some sort of uh, disrespect. Um, maybe he'll look at the top 50 players uh, that, that TSN put out and, and take uh, take a little bit of an insult uh, to that. But I think uh, I think he's going to be much more comfortable, though. I, while he doesn't have that same chip on his shoulder, I wouldn't imagine. Uh, I think you always have something to prove. And, and uh, like I say, guys can come up with the best of reasons as, as to why they go out there and, and ply their trade. But I think we're going to see a more comfortable, more relaxed uh, quarterback out there. And as long as they have that balanced attack, you know, I don't want to see him dropping back and throwing 50 balls. You know, I, I'd like to see the, the split of the run game being multidimensional, giving him that coverage of having a play action game. I think he needs all these things. I think that's why he was so good when he came to Winnipeg. It was the strength of that offensive line. It was the strength of their running game. It was the strength of their play action attack. That really helped him out. He didn't have to take this team on his shoulders and win games. And as long as that scenario doesn't manifest itself in Winnipeg, I think, you know, he can be successful again this season as well in a 14 game schedule. Uh, TB 12, Tom Edward Brady, the best at manufacturing a chip right here. And it seems to have worked <laughs> right. He's the best. I would say he's the best yeah. at doing it. Yeah. And, and Hey, Nick said that you two used to have fun jaw jacking each other. What do you remember? Cause you're obviously on the field at the same time, <laughs> Winnipeg, Calgary. What do you, anything stand out to you, Doug? I mean, it's not often you can, there's not a lot of interaction between, uh, uh, you know, slots and uh, defensive tackles, but I'm sure, you know, he, <laughs> He was a very physical guy, right? Very physical player. So uh, I was very uh, aware of what he was doing to defensive ends on film, <laughs> watching them, cracking down on guys, blowing up guys. I mean, uh, one of the most physical receivers to ever play the game in the Canadian Football League. Just uh, unbelievable presence out there. That was this thing, you know, to be a, a special player like he was, you got to do something different. And uh, his different was his physicality, right? So... I'm sure we, uh, I can't remember anything specific, but I'm definitely sure we jawed back and forth, you know, about, uh, I'm sure I invited him to come down in the middle of the, the defensive line at some point and <laughs> leave my defensive line. And uh, I'm sure he said uh, he would love to and or insert a wham block here or there. So uh, it's like I said, it's not often you can get a nose tackle and a receiver uh, uh, jawing at each other back and forth but i had the utmost respect for him and his game because he wasn't afraid to get his uh his nose dirty and stick uh get involved in anything come in between the in the the trenches where things get pretty nasty so he was just fearless out there so that was uh that was always real fun with him two guys with their rightful place in the canadian football hall of fame yeah in a helmet i could never look doug in the face because i don't have a neck <laughs> you look at him in the belly button I, I didn't have a neck so <laughs> with my helmet on i couldn't really get all the way up there so any trash talk i had to do it from kind of far back so i could see him I love in the it. face that's so. fantastic all right great. doug hey listen i will be listening tonight as any as always what is it Recycle everywhere blue bombers football i'm looking forward to it tonight and uh good luck with the season man thanks for the time Hey, thanks for having us on. It should be a fantastic year, and I'm just excited to get back at it. Awesome. Thanks, Good to see you. Have a great Blue week. Bombers great Doug Brown joining us from Winnipeg. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.